Okay, so here we are at reaction number three. So again, I cleaned the probe, the uh, stirring rod, the inside of the calorimeter just to neutralize it as best as I can before we get to our final reaction. So inside the calorimeter, I've already measured 50 milliliters of one molar hydrochloric acid, and I have measured in a graduated cylinder and then poured it into a beaker, uh, the one molar of sodium hydroxide solution. And this is what I will be adding after I am able to um, get a good baseline of my initial temperature. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start my data collecting. And I'm gonna start that on my clock. Okay, so it looks like it's starting to um, get a good baseline. Now I'm going to add the sodium hydroxide liquid to my calorimeter. And then I'm going to start to stir. And unlike what I've seen from the last couple uh, reactions, it looks like it's starting to immediately take a nice big climb and a nice jump. Like right off the bat, it just kind of beelined straight up. So that's kind of a different change than what we saw with the previous two reactions. So we're just going to again keep stirring this pretty vigorously until about three minutes in. Kind of starting to look like it's plateauing a little bit. Hopefully you can see maybe a little bit of a change kind of as we reach the end of three minutes, but we'll see. So about maybe one minute left. Um, inside the calorimeter, um, nothing exciting is going on. So like I said, this is a pretty, it's an interesting lab when you see it in front of you on the um, Chromebook. When it comes to maybe watching it on a YouTube video, not that exciting because it's really hard to see probably the screen, which is why I'm sharing you guys, sharing with you guys the graphs that I get in a separate file so you guys can kind of see that a little bit better, hopefully make some connections with what you observed in the YouTube videos with what you observe in or on, I should say, the graphs. Couple more seconds and then we can stop collecting. All right. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and press stop. See what this looks like. Huh, this is very interesting. So let me see. I don't know if you guys can see it on your end, but when you see the graph um, in the file that I'll share with you, you'll definitely see why I think this is quite interesting. So looking down here, so it looks like the lowest temperature that this reached before skyrocketing literally way up was 19.2. So that would be my initial temperature. And then I'm gonna go follow, and I'm gonna use my cursor. I'm gonna follow along. So it looks like it jumped to 25.1, and it stayed there for a good while before dropping down to 
24.9 and then it jumped back up to 25 that was kind of interesting and then it looks like it's starting to plateau and the lowest temperature over here that we have is 24.8 but if I go back it looks like the highest that this reaction reached as far as temperature goes was 25.1 so that would be considered our final temperature okay so I'll share this picture with you guys Check out the other videos with me showing you how to use this data. I'm only going to show you guys how to use the data for reaction one, and then I would like you guys to figure out um, how to use your data for reactions two and three. Okay? And then we'll talk more about this during class, but this is our Hess's Law experiment.